Hey, good afternoon, YouTubers, Facebookers, party people. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If this video is helpful. Please subscribe down below. Click the notifications there. Send me your wonderful comments. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. That I promise you. If you got any automotive-related questions for me, just hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on Facebook. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible if I can. And remember, anytime you can repair it instead of replacing it is always the best way. If it's man-made, you can generally repair it. So today we're working on a 2009 uh, Mazda CX-7. We're going to change the thermostat in it. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, it's a 2.3 turbo. Um, so this is going to be about the same procedure if you have a Ford Focus or any Ford product with the 2.3 in it for that matter. And we've done a couple of these on different models. Never done one on the CX-7, but... We're pretty certain that it's the same procedure. We're going to basically remove the top plastic cover right there. And then we're going to remove the power steering reservoir. And then that will allow us enough access to the thermostat housing. And you replace the whole thermostat housing all at one time on these vehicles. Pretty simple. So you're going to need to drain your coolant, unhook your uh, positive cable on your battery. You do not have to drain all the coolant out. Okay, ours is missing some of the little pushy pins that go right here. So this, this cover just basically comes right off once you pull the pushy pins out on each side. So we're going to go ahead and remove the power steering line right here that is over the top of your power steering reservoir. And that should be a 17 millimeter bolt. Make sure when you're removing that, you don't lose the uh washers that are on the top and the bottom of this thing i think there's one on the top but i know there's one on the bottom just in case this works i'll have it on video all right so we got that up yeah that's up and we'll slide that off and then that keeps the clip in there now the bottom one is going to be tricky 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 yeah <laughs> move your hand i ain't gonna move it off there and it's meant to be taken off with a new out. Yeah, well that won't stop us from trying. Okay, so the lower bracket is the same as the upper bracket. And I'm going to use a pick tool and I'm going to stick it inside there and try to pry up on the tab. And then I'll use the screwdriver to pry it back and hopefully pry it off. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you this on camera. But if it works, I'll let you know and I'll give you the little procedure on how exactly I held my hands and everything to get it out of there. Okay, so we decided we're just going to remove the three bolts on the power steering pump and we're going to remove the belt. Messing with that clip just wasn't working out for us, so if you want to save yourself some time or you want to try it and uh, beat me, I guess, get that clip off without removing the belt and the pump, you can, but we're going to go ahead and remove that because it's the simplest, easiest way. It's held on by three 12 millimeter bolts and I'm gonna get you the bolt size for the tensioner and we're gonna remove the belt. Okay, so we think that that's a 14 down there, right below that alternator pulley. So you're gonna move it clockwise towards you and then you'll be able to reach down, pull off the belt, off, slide it off one of the idler pulleys or off the power steering, wherever. There we go. Now once we've got the belt off and the 15 millimeter nut loosened, we've got to remove two upper bolts that hold it on. And then down on the bottom, there's one 12 millimeter bolt down there. And then our power steering pump will come out of the way. Okay, so the two 12 millimeter bolts on the top are pretty self-explanatory. I took them out with the regular 12 millimeter deep well. So... We've got our power steering pump out of the way. There was three bolts on that, and we said four. Um, the bottom bolt was super simple to get out. It was just an extension <laughs> 12 millimeter. and a 12 millimeter bolt. It wasn't nothing in our way that prevented us. Now Jeff's going to take off the thermostat housing, which is right down there. He's got the hoses pulled away. And these hoses are kind of a pain in the butt to get out, so just be patient and just kind of work, work them off, and they'll come out. bolts that hold this in are they all accessible yeah okay so there's we're gonna remove the three bolts yep. and two on the, the third so there's two on the top and then there's one straight below the one that's kind of you can't really see them but they're 
they're in a kind of a triangle pattern you can do what the blind guy that's making the video does just put your fingers down there and feel it but you can you can see this one if you get get down there but gush now that we got that out we're gonna go ahead and put in the new one make sure that your gasket's got a little bit of dielectric on it or a little bit of grease or oil or something just so it makes a nice seal against the engine and assemblies exactly the opposite of disassembly imagine that <laughs> co-phase fill with coolant run hopefully the video was a little bit helpful uh I wanted it to turn out a little bit better than that, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Knowing the steps, I think, is the best for you guys. Hopefully, you'll still subscribe, share my videos, send me your wonderful comments. I greatly appreciate y'all. God bless. If anybody else can do it, you can do it too.